In this assignment, K nearest neighbor variants were explored for image annotation. In order to make the experiments domain independent, features for the training and testing images were made available. There are three variants of KNN that were explored JC, tag prop, and 2P KNN. Joint equal contribution uh, involves arguably the simplest way to combine distances corresponding to different features. All we have to do is to allow each individual distance to contribute equally to the final distance. The only thing that we have to ascertain is that the individual distances are scaled such that they range from 0 to 1. Tag prop uses a parameterized k nearest neighbor approach in which the parameters are learned through an optimization process. Here, the distance metric based as opposed to rank based parameters of tag prop have been used. When the number of distance metrics used is more than one, the tag prop variant is called ML, in which uh, ML stands for machine learning. Another dimension for tag prop variants is whether or not logistic discriminant models, sigmoid, are used to boost the probability of rare tags. In 2PKNN, the idea is to use a two-pass approach so as to address the following two problems. One, class imbalance, which refers to the fact that there is often a high variance in the number of images corresponding to different labels. The other is weak labeling, meaning that a considerable number of available images are not annotated with all the relevant labels because of the limitations of manual annotation. Uh, in the first pass of 2PKNN, a subset of training images are picked in a class balanced way. The second pass performs label assignment for a test image using that subset of uh, training images so as to address the class imbalance and weak labeling problems. There is an ML variant of 2PKNN in which weights for combining distances are learned. Uh, for this assignment, the evaluation measures used are precision, recall, F1 score which combines precision and recall, and N+. Let me jump straight to the experiments now, starting with the baseline performance experiment. Here, all the methods and their variants were evaluated under the standard setting. Here are the observations. In line with what's been mentioned in the papers, 2 pkn outperforms the other two methods for both feature types. So E3, V6, E3, V7, and E7 uh, correspond to 2 pkn and here clearly they outperform the other uh, methods and their variance in terms of both precision recall and F1 score and N+. Another observation is that tag prop performs better than JEC as expected again. Uh, and the ML variants again expectedly do better than their non-ML counterparts. Surprisingly, tag prop with sigmoid does worse than tag prop without sigmoid, but in the ML case, it gets reversed and the expectation is met. Moving on to validation, validation can be used to obtain good estimates for the hyperparameters of a model. An example of hyperparameters is the learning rate eta in the back propagation algorithm for neural networks. The objective of validation is to ensure that the model generalizes well as opposed to overfitting to the training data. In my experiment, 10 to 15 percentage of the training data was turned into validation data. The validation samples were picked using indices spread across uniformly in the training data so as to ensure that the validation data reflects the training data. I used parameter sweep or grid search on the validation data to get hyperparameter estimates for 2PKNN and tag prop. For 2PKNN, I tried to tune the following parameters K1, the number of nearest neighbors considered in the first pass, and W, the bandwidth parameter. For tag prop, I tried to tune in it and weighted. Let's move on to the third experiment, per label performance. Here is the label frequency graph, which follows an exponential curve. Here are a couple of comments about the results. The more frequent the labels, the better the performance tends to be. This is partly because rare labels are found less often and in lower counts among the nearest neighbors of an input image. This makes them less likely to receive high enough scores. Consequently, their recall numbers are lower. 
Another thing is that uh, since 2PKNN ensures balanced representation across labels, including the rare ones, because of its two-pass approach, it performs better for lower frequency labels than JEC and TagProp. Moving on to quantitative analysis, case 1 shows images in which V1 outperforms V3 and V6. For the first image, the ground truth labels are flowers, needles, blooms and cactus, all four of which are present in the predicted labels. Going down, uh, if you look at case 3, wherein V6 outperforms V3 and V1, the first image has the ground truth of coral, fish, lion and cave, all four of which are present in the predicted labels. One of the observations uh, is that uh, the number of ground truth labels in many of these images is less than 5, but in almost all the cases, the algorithm uh, computes exactly 5 labels. This mismatch of counts clearly leads to a drop in precision, even though some of the additional labels extracted are good, uh, as can be seen upon visual inspection. So if you mandate that the ground truth test data have 5 labels per image, the performance is likely to go up. In experiment 4.1, analyzing class imbalance, since one of the asks is to plot the number of labels falling in each bin, what I have done for bidding is to use the CDF, cumulative distribution of frequencies, and perform the binning such that each bin gets about the same frequency mass, but not the same number of labels. Here is the bin-wise label count graph. The number of labels in the first bin is a lot higher than the number of labels in the last bin. This is because the frequencies of labels in bin 1 are much lower than the frequency of labels in bin 5 and the frequency mass per bin is the same. Because the labels within a bin move from rare to frequent as you go from left to right, the performance tends to be worse for lower index bins in the case of the rudimentary JEC because it doesn't use any special measure to handle rare keywords. 2PKNN on the other hand is robust in terms of handling class imbalance so its performance doesn't follow a monotonic increase as one goes from bins containing low frequency labels to the right side. Moving on to 4.2 what happens if you randomly remove labels from the ground truth of training data? Here is how the original frequencies look like. And after the removal of some labels, the frequencies drop to this. I was supposed to remove 30% of the labels. The performance hasn't dropped in a significant way because of that for any of the methods. I guess if the percentage had been higher, I would have observed a drop. Uh, 2PKNN retains its supremacy because of its robust uh, multipass design again. In 4.3, we had to shrink the training and testing data by considering only frequent labels. Here are some observations and thoughts on the results. The recall went up across the board. The way I see it, the reason is that the total number of labels was brought down, but the number of labels being assigned to an image remained the same, 5. To understand this better, consider a completely random classifier. Its probability of getting full recall per image is 1 upon LC5, where L is the total number of labels. In other words, the probability of getting full recall for a random classifier is inversely proportional to the number of labels which we've just brought down and the recall has therefore gone up. Uh, tag prop with sigmoid and multiple distances, ML, performs the best in terms of recall here, whereas 2PKNN continues to outperform the other methods in terms of F1 score. In 4.4, we had to shrink the training and testing data by considering only rare labels. Here again, the recall went up across the board for the reason I just mentioned in the previous case. As far as the performance is concerned, the ML version of 2PKNN does the best. It's not surprising because 2PKNN is designed keeping in mind performance on rare labels and the ML variant combines distances optimally. Moving on to extensions, the question I got was that uh, assume you are given all the test data and asked to test it together. How will you formulate the annotation algorithm? 
I formulated the problem as a semi-supervised uh, self-learning problem in which the labels for only a small percentage of the test data are available and using those, the rest of the test data is annotated. In contrast to the typical problem setting in which the label set is much bigger than the unlabeled set, this is an especially challenging task. Uh, two of the possible approaches for that are as follows. The first involves clustering. Cluster all test data points using say k-means. Annotate all the unlabeled test data points within a cluster through a classification technique such as KNN that uses the labeled data falling within that cluster as the training set. One, one nearest neighbor strategy is to set the k, the number of clusters, to the size of the labeled data and assign all points closest to each of these k label points, the labels of that point. The second approach involves incremental annotation and label set updation. First, annotate all unlabeled points using some annotation scheme that takes the label points as the training data. Keep the labels of only the points for which the confidence of classification was high. Move them along with their labels to the label set, which will be used as the next training set. Do not use the labels computed for the rest of the points. Repeat this process until enough points have moved to the label set, the set that is used as the training set, at which point all other points can be annotated conventionally using that set as the training set. The route that I have chosen is the second one. I use multiple phases involving K and N classifiers with different Ks. The first phase involves 1 and N as the number of label images available is the least at that point. Once more points move to the label set, I use a 3NN. Finally, all remaining points are annotated in one go, the usual way, using the big enough label set as the training set, involving no confidence-based selection. A key component here is a measure of confidence. Here are the measures that I've used. In the case of 1NN, I use the inverse of the least distance as a measure of confidence for a point, meaning image. For KNN, when K is greater than 1, what happens is that the top 5 labels for an image are decided by computing the number of occurrences of each label present in the K nearest neighbors and then picking the 5 most frequent labels. Hence, I found the variance of the occurrence vector a good choice as the confidence measure. Why? Let's observe the desirability that if all labels occur the same number of times, the confidence metric should return a really low value, assuming that the KNN classification is exclusively voting based. Now the metric that I've picked, variance, will do exactly that. And in cases where different labels have different frequencies, the variance will be higher, again, exactly as desired.